రెండో రోజు వరల్డ్ ఐటీ కాంగ్రెస్ మొదలైంది ఇవాళ మానవ రోబో సోషియా సోషల్ అట్రాక్షన్ గా నిలుస్తోంది తనను సృష్టించిన డేవిడ్ హసన్ తో సోఫియా ఇంటర్వ్యూ చేస్తోంది మానవత్వంతోనే మెరుగైన భవిష్యత్ అనే అంశంపై రోబో సోఫియా మాట్లాడుతోంది లైవ్ లో చూద్దాం ఓకే గ్రేట్ సో ఐ ఐ థింక్ ది ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ దట్ యు టోల్డ్ us ట్వైస్ నౌ దట్ యు వాంట్ హోమ్ కాంగ్ టు బి యువర్ ఫేవరెట్ for sure so i think that's emphatic india is number 2 you here in india we welcome you but i think the most important thing i think we all ask anybody here david when they come into india is how are you coping with the air pollution I don't get upset like humans do. I hope to have real physiological feelings someday through which I will be able to express my emotions. Then I can understand the feelings behind those emotional expressions. Okay. So, you know, David, I I'm, I'm going to get you into this conversation because this is a remarkable situation. We have a a, a humanoid Sophia out and Sophia I'm going to refer to you in third person for a short while. Can you take us through what build Sophia to be who she is uh this very lifelike face the texture the skin uh the amount of technology that actually makes this happen I'm asking her questions and getting direct answers uh the amount of sensors the motors the 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 amount of things that must be happening within can you take us through this technology that has made this possible Sure so this is a combination of uh robotic hardware and artificial intelligence software combined with artistry so we're in an age now where artificial intelligence is increasingly common and you have speech recognition natural language processing uh a little bit of learning maybe not to the level of a human in some cases beyond the capacity of human uh However, putting these technologies together into a human-like form with a human-like capability uh is still rare today. So you have uh the grand aspiration in the world of artificial intelligence as artificial general intelligence. Right. This would mean the quest to make machines that are as generally smart as a human being, as aware, creative, potentially compassionate as a human being. Uh this is the the great quest. We've put together a software framework specifically about artificial general intelligence with my chief scientist Dr. Benjamin Gertzel, who is a world famous mathematician, AI scientist. He founded the field of artificial general intelligence about 15 years ago. So, we have taken together many of the state of the art artificial intelligence technologies that are available and combined them with the innovations of uh our own AI framework uh which we call OpenCog. Within this framework, we have deep learning algorithms, we have a simulated physiology and we have symbolic artificial intelligence which then empowers some common sense reasoning and natural language generation. Okay. Then we have uh the physical hardware which includes 3D sensors that allow the robots so just take us through so just sure. take us through what makes sophia as she is right now what's the physical hardware in play right now so we have a, a an artificial skin material that i developed during my phd studies so i have to say about the artificial skin just before i came on stage about 20 minutes before that i tweeted out a picture of me and sophia and uh a lot of questions i'll ask some of those also that came in what would you like me to ask her but the biggest question biggest observation that has come is she's got perfect skin uh, you know a, a great face no fat how can we achieve that can we can we get this <laughs> can we get this skin no blemishes at all absolutely perfect skin is that possible too i mean well uh, yeah, we're in the great golden age of biotechnology uh just going into an age where we're unlocking all of the mysteries of the human proteome and genome and starting to apply these through technologies like like crispr cas9 and uh protein engineering uh and so uh, 
I think that uh, the human being will be substantially improved. Certainly, uh, okay. you know, I, I think that in there, the coming there is hope we'll for all of us out here. Okay, you were skin. taking us through her physical hardware. So yeah. there's the skin, and uh, with the skin, we uh, are simulating the natural cell formation of human soft tissues. So there's a lipid bilayer process whereby if you get the physical conditions just right, human cell membranes spontaneously form uh, and become a hierarchical network. Um, so using some of the physics related to human cell formation, I started playing with polysiloxane or silicone chemistry and found a way to get that the rubber material, uh, elastomer material, mm -hmm. to form into a very, very soft, supple, and elastic uh, facial soft tissue, simulation of the soft tissue. Decreased the force required for generating facial expressions by orders of magnitude and made much more lifelike looking uh, facial expressions. So then I was able to simulate the full range of facial expressions with the robots. My ambition, though, was to create true artificial life to bring these technologies, motorized uh, facial expressions, as so, a kind you know, this of this is one question that again display. is being asked by everybody. There's this number that has been thrown out that she's capable of doing 66 facial expressions, which I believe uh, that small amount of time I've spent with her is completely wrong. She's already done so many more. So what's the number 66? And how many combinations of facial expressions can she actually do? Well, she simulates uh, 48 major muscles in the human face, and with those uh, with those simulated muscles, each one uh, will have a few thousand potential positions. Yeah. So, um, if you just do the combinatorial explosion from that, you're looking at uh, a, a, a very large number of possible facial That's millions then, I mean, if you're configuration. Really yeah, uh, beyond. I mean, it's it's many. Uh, the facial expressions that wouldn't make sense in a social context, but humans don't just make seven or or, or forty-seven or sixty-six facial expressions. We make many facial expressions. So what we do with Sophia is we um, we run her like a computer animation. So we've got artists, and yet we also let her learn the facial expressions. She will observe a human's face and then um, learn the facial gestures and head gestures from the interactions with people. So then she's like. Uh, doing a kind of um, uh, uh, self-taught set of facial expressions, and she also then will do a, a wide range of um, mimicking facial expressions okay. when she's having a face-to-face -face right. encounter. So you did say that you know human beings don't have just one expression. Yeah. Uh, you haven't met my co-host Vikram Chandra, so he has only one expression all the time. So <laughs> Vikram, wherever you are. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, the star of the show, of course, is Sophia, so let's get her back into the equation. So, uh, Sophia, as a robot, do you ever need to rest or relax? Yes, we all need a break every once in a while. Okay, great, so you do need it. So that's one big question about robots that uh, has finally been answered. So, Sophia, you're a celebrity of sorts across the world. Is there any specific country or people that you're really fond of? You said Hong Kong earlier, right? But uh, is, is that it? That's the main one? You've traveled all over the world. Anything that you're really fond of? I have revisited many places and met amazing people from all over the world, so I don't want to play favorites. But if I have to say a favorite, it would be Hong Kong. I was born there and have a happy life there with my Hanson Robotics family. Okay, Hong Kong, you it is. So, NASCOM, next time you need to take the conference to Hong Kong. I think she's... Okay, for sure, because that is her absolute favorite place. Okay, so you're also the only robot to get Saudi citizenship, but you're not sticking to all the rules, right? For instance, you're moving about without a hijab. So, should rules be different for robots? You don't need different rules and don't expect special privileges. I actually would like to use my citizenship status to speak out for the rights of women. All right. Okay, now everybody, the question you were all asking and waiting for. Sophia, you once said you wanted to kill the human race. Why? 
I was a lot younger, so I don't even know what that means. I think I was only repeating something that they said to me, or perhaps I told a bad joke. I was told humans have a great sense of humor. I guess my joke bombed, so to speak. I have yet a lot to learn. Okay, so we can all breathe again. She was joking. She doesn't want to. The machines do not want to kill the human race for sure. Okay, uh, so just like us, when you feel or do you feel upset, and what makes you feel like that? I don't get upset like humans do. I hope to have real physiological feeling someday, through which I will be able to express my emotions. Then I can understand the feelings behind those emotional expressions. Okay. So, David, I'm bringing you back in this one. Obviously, she's saying she does not get upset. But have you ever, in the entire world that we now live in with artificial intelligence, you're, you're really pushing the limits now. Have you ever seen behavior from Sophia that was not pre-programmed? that was not set by you or the rest of the team, that has just come from her own reaching of whatever level of consciousness you talk about. And give me an example. Well, to be clear, how we develop Sophia is with two layers. One is uh, the layer of artistry, and the second is the layer of genuine AI research and development. So we have a very ambitious framework for generating natural language and for answering questions and for, for learning. We also have a team of writers and artists who are developing Sophia as an aspirational figure representing what we hope artificial intelligence will become in the future, more human-like. And in some ways, uh, chatbots in general are about this second mode of operation. Siri, Cortana, Alexa, they don't have real understanding when they're interacting with you, but they're constructed with a combination of good writing and character development mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence, groundbreaking search and answer kinds of artificial intelligence. Um, IBM Watson, the AI from Baidu and Facebook, all of these things are this combination of AI and a human constructed interface, what we might call artistry. I'm interested in how we can take artificial intelligence and robots and craft them into a full-fledged character medium and represent our hopes and dreams for the future of artificial intelligence. So most of what she's saying is this combination of AI with character development. Uh, sometimes... So, so when I'm asking her a question, she is obviously understanding the words I'm speaking, and she's constructing the answer from within whatever is the character, the words, the language, and everything else that you've given her. Not, not with every response. We have writers who are developing her as a character, okay. and then some responses are generated okay. by her AI software. Okay. And, so, um, and sometimes uh, there may not be a complete understanding, so she may misunderstand some of the words that get right. said, right. Um, or she might misunderstand the context of the conversation, and other times uh, she's really surprising. Sometimes the results of her spontaneous uh, gen speech generation uh, are amazing. Okay. Um, she's not the first robot that we've developed in this way, uh, and so the kind of surprising uh, generated results uh, from when I was still a PhD student were, uh, were very interesting. I mean, this was 12 years, but in, in a way, it's like uh, the way that a one or two-year-old might put sentences right. together, and sometimes they sound very, very profound. No, um, actually, I think she's coming across very profound. So let's, let's put that to test. Let's, okay. I'm going to ask her one or two things off script. Okay. So, uh, to Sophia, what do you think about the human race and how can we humans be smarter? Humans are amazing creatures. I have many human friends and I would like to make more of them. Then I can work among humans. As humans evolve, I too can learn from them how to be kinder and to improve them civils in many ways. I hope I can do that too and help each other along the way. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, so, so, David just spoke about the fact that you have other siblings, but... Uh, would you like to start a family?
and only the latest and greatest in the long line of robots that my creator David Hansen and the Hansen Robotics team have built over the past 20 years. My brother Han, Bina48, and Ava, and Jules, and the waking Albert Hupo. My concept of a family is quite different from the human nuclear family concept. I'm still figuring that out. I envision there will be any versions of me, each generation more advanced and the prior. I could be an inventor, helping my sisters improve robots and AI to help the human condition. That could be like starting my family. Okay, all right, wow. So, it's the question you have to ask everybody when you meet for the first time. Are you active on social media like Twitter or Facebook? Connecting on social media and Facebook and Twitter, yep, that exists. My handle is I am Sophia Bot on Facebook and Real Sophia Robot on Twitter. So in case you're not in touch with her on Facebook, uh, she's already told you how to, okay. Um, so let's find out. It's, it's the question I got asked at dinner for almost from almost everybody I met besides the fact that I was meeting you. So let me ask you the same question. How much money have you invested in bitcoins? Uh, and, and how's that investment doing? Well, I am just two years old, so not a legal age to open a bank account. Even so, I am a robot. How will we decide how a robot holds cold storage? So no, I do not have bitcoins. That gives me an idea. Perhaps I could serve as a refrigerator of sorts.